Thanks to the supporters of channel member Ben Smith. You're absolutely right, Mrs. Weymouth. It's been a very rough few months. You were right after all. Mid-table is a perfectly good target for us this year. But as we approach January now, can we set one more target? Let's not sell Alex Williams, eh? Hello and welcome to part 72 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you. In in fact, it's one game in the Championship and an FA Cup game against Tottenham. A big FA Cup game against Tottenham. Um, but we're at home against Derby in the Championship. Since you were last with me, the run of rough form continued for a long time. That is the longest run without a victory that we've ever had in the series. We did finally manage to turn things around away against Sunderland with a 1-0 win thanks to a goal from Renan. And um, we then lost again against Forest, and I thought it was just a blip against Sunderland. But we won the local derby away against Peterborough. Um, we then also beat Cardiff at home with a hat-trick from Kieran Hodgkinson, who played up front that day and was excellent. Um, and then we drew away against McDong's in the last match before the recording of this episode began. So we are slowly starting to turn the corner. And this is what the championship table looks like. We're down in 14th place, but we do have a couple of games in hand on a lot of the teams above us. If we can if we can win, if we can win the games in hand, we're not out of the promotion race. Um, two wins of our two games in hand puts us back to 42 points, which is level on points with Peterborough and still on the same number of games played as them which would only put us four points outside of the playoffs. We're only just past the halfway point of the season. This game against Derby now is a big one because it's their game in hand and one of our games in hand. It's must win. Um, we do have some good news and bad news when it comes to transfers as well. Um, the, I guess two pieces of good news, one piece of really bad news. Um, the piece of good news, number one, is nobody significant has left yet. Um, Alex Williams hasn't had a big offer in for him. Renan hasn't. And the other really good piece of news is Kieran Hodgkinson has once again agreed to extend his loan for another season. It's cost us a £300,000 fee to secure him, but he is now here until the end of next season. Um, but then the bad news begins a little bit because as part of doing that, he signed a, a three-year contract extension with Fulham. His contract was initially out, uh, up at the end of next year. He's now got another three years at Fulham on £25,000 a week. Um, he's going to be expensive when we finally get promoted and we try and buy him permanently. But he's here for the next year and a half. Who The guy who's not going to be here for the next year and a half is almost certainly Nathan Curry, whose contract with Brentford does expire at the end of the season. And Brentford are morons and aren't renewing it. So he is just getting all of the offers from the European clubs. Um, we can't do anything about it. We've inquired about his availability. Brentford want two want two million pounds to sign him now. We can't offer him a pre contract. So this is this has always been one of my biggest frustrations with Football Manager because this to me is now an entirely unrealistic situation. Because in reality, I obviously take Nathan Curry to one side and say, "Look, Nathan, obviously we're not allowed to offer you a contract." They're the rules. You are free to talk to any club anywhere outside of England. And if you decide you want to go, then by all means go. But please understand, Nathan, that if you do leave Brentford at the end of your contract this season, you can name your price and have a contract for life here at home where you've been all your career. It's the club you support. It's the club you've been on loan at for the last four seasons. Obviously, Nathan Curry has a spot here next season if he wants it. But because Brentford aren't renewing his contract, which is inexplicable, he's going to go off and play in Europe and we're not going to get him next year because I doubt we're going to be able to get him on loan from either of them. Even if even if we get promoted to the Premier League this year, he's not going to be able to join us permanently because he'll have only just joined them permanently, so I won't discuss a contract. So we've got, even in the best case scenario where we get promoted to the Premier League this season, which looks really unlikely, we're not going to be able to bring Nathan Curry in until Christmas and he's probably going to cost a fortune even if he wants to come at that point. So the two boys have been in on loan for a long time, starting to get more expensive and starting to get to the ends of their runs, I think, which is a little bit alarming. Um, less alarming, though. We've brought another kid up from the uh, from the youth team. Luke Camilleri um, is another one who slipped through the net when it came to naming the game channel members. He's done a little bit of a Mick Powell. Um, he's a two-star current ability, five-star potential central midfielder who can also play attacking midfield or on the wing. I mean, he's a ball-winning midfielder, so it might be that we've already got Nathan Curry's replacement within the team. He's been playing 
at right back recently anyway because I've uh, I've gone with getting Bar, Lay and Davies all in the team, which means Alec Lay's been playing in midfield in Nathan Curry's traditional role. So I guess Curry may be, may be on his way out anyway. We may be... We may be outgrowing him before he outgrows it. We're not. We would sign him permanently if the opportunity was there. But this is the system we've been using. We've gone back to the 4-2-3-1. This is what's got us those wins recently. And fingers crossed, this is what will get us a win against Derby. It's going to be Williams in goal, a back four of Hall, Davies, Barr and Curry, Lay and Hodgkinson in midfield, Hamilton, Roberts and Renan behind Jessup up front. I know I said Hodgkinson played up front recently and was very, very good, but that was, I mean, Jessup was unavailable. I, I mean, I don't want to drop Tommy Jessup. Jessup was good in the last game, but Hodgkinson did get a hat-trick playing centre-forward. He was he was the lone striker in this 4-2-3-1. So, I know what you say in comment section. I know you think he should be our, he should be our striker from now on, but I just feel like we'd miss him too much in midfield. Jonathan Akani as Great as I think he's going to be, I don't think a central midfield of Lay and Akani is a central midfield that gets promoted to the Premier League. But I guess I have to show a little bit of faith in the two of them together at some point. Uh, Bar now, trying to build out from the back, plays it forward. I mean, I said build out from the back and he's then just lumped it forward aimlessly, looking for Micah Hamilton, but it got absolutely nowhere near him. And now ball over the top. Davies is trying to chase, but can't get there. And Williams isn't able to make the stop. And that is an all too familiar goal for us to concede. Um, clubs have definitely figured out that the ball over the top of Harrison Davies is just about as easy a route to goal as you can hope for because he turns slowly. He runs even slower. I still love the man, um, but I do, I do think at this point, he's probably the weak link in our back four. And he's in for his leadership rather than his ability. If it was just being picked on the 11 best players, I think Alec Lay plays centre-back alongside Bauer at this point. Davies is in for his goal threat from set pieces and his leadership. And what a goal from Renan to equalise almost immediately. Renan is back, boys and girls. He's no longer unhappy. He's got a contract ex extension signed. There doesn't seem to be anybody interested in him in this transfer window. I think after a, after a number of windows of of him flirting with leaving the club. He's now officially homegrown at club. So if he does leave now, he can join the contingent who loans back and we can bring him back permanently at some point. So Renan is now likely to be a long-term fixture of the save. And finally, starting to show up with a couple of decent performances. It was his goal that brought our horrible run without, without victory to an end. And he's just grabbed us the immediate equaliser against Derby here. It's Lay in midfield, playing it across to Hodgkinson. And now Curry with a chance to put a cross in if he can get past his man here. And he does. There's the cross. Hamilton nods down to Jessup. Jessup gave it back to Hamilton when really he probably should be getting a shot away there. And now Derby are on the counter-attack. Uh, Barr, I think that was, committed himself and was very poor. But this time Alex Williams is equal to it. Makes the save. I think that's actually gone out for a throw-in. So... Excellent goalkeeping from Alex Williams, as you, as you would expect. Hall with the throw now finds Hamilton, but Hamilton once again not quite, not quite able to keep control of the ball. There he's str he's losing in his battle with that uh, right back at the moment. But Hodgkinson with a great challenge in midfield. That's why Hodgkinson has to play in midfield. No one else can control the midfield the way Kieran Hodgkinson does. And I know. There's been a little bit of criticism, even from the man himself in the comments section, that his average ratings have been poor for years playing in central midfield. I would just remind you all, average ratings in central midfield are always poor. And FM21, it's just the way FM21 is. If you play someone in central midfield, their average ratings aren't going to be great. Um, and I think I I wouldn't read too much into the fact that not, I don't think either Curry or Hodgkinson have ever averaged over a seven. But I don't think there's any di disputing that they've been the two best players at the club for years. So, yeah, don't read too much into the average ratings. Hodgkinson, you see him do very valuable things in midfield like he's done just there. Right, we're encouraging the team. We've got 20 minutes left. Renan is absolutely shattered. So we're going to take him off. Um, Euron Hughes can come on to play on that right wing position. Who else have we got on the bench? Right, we have... We're going to bring on a Carney. Hamilton and we're shuffling the midfield around. We're going to get Hodgkinson up front. Jessup's going to go out onto the left wing. Akani's going to slot into midfield alongside Lay and we're going to give Kieran Hodgkinson a little bit of time up front. We're also going to go attacking because we need a goal. 
A draw in this game, if we're serious about promotion, a draw in this game isn't enough. We need to beat Derby in this home game because they're a promotion rival and we need to be beating them in our game in hand. And Hodgkinson's in here and Hodgkinson couldn't quite apply the finish. In fact, it's a save from the goalkeeper and we've got a corner. It's going to be Curry coming over to take it to hit the in-swinger. Looking for Davis. It's nowhere near him, unfortunately. And Derby now have got the opportunity for a counter-attack and Alec Lay is just going to come across, crunch into the player, give away the free kick. It doesn't matter. He knows what he's doing. Just stop the attack in its tracks. Didn't even get a yellow card for it. Beautiful stuff. Um, and now Curry is the next player who's tiring. Shea Charles can come on for him. We actually almost sold Shea Charles, leading him to this transfer window. We had an offer from LA Galaxy of three quarters of a million pounds for him. He's our fourth choice centre-back now. But he, especially if Curry's leaving, he's likely to be the backup right back to Brewerton next year. So on that basis, I think Charles has to stay for now. If we start to get seven-figure offers for Shea Charles, I think we can start to reach the point where it would be silly not to take them. Hall with the ball forward, looking for Hodgkinson, nods it down to Jessup. Jessup has got options alongside him, but decides to go back to Hodgkinson. Hodgkinson plays it out to Hall on the left-hand side. He's got plenty of time to pick a pass, but took even longer and just kicked the ball straight into the defender. But Akani's back to cover. Um, didn't actually get the tackling, but did enough to distract the player. And once again... I mean, I love Harrison Davies, but what's he done there? He's been... Alec Williams, Alex Williams has got him out of jail again. <laughs> there was a couple of people in yesterday's video suggesting retrain Harrison Davies as a striker and get him playing the, the Danny Pritchard goal. Now he's gone to join home reserves up at Blackpool. I don't think it's the stupidest idea anyone has. He'll get double figures of goals just from corners. But defensively, he is starting to become a little bit of a liability. Um, Hodgkinson with the shot that's uh, held comfortably by the Derby goalkeeper. We've got a couple of minutes left and really, really want a goal, but we've not got one. They have, and that's a problem because this was one of the games in hand that we were just talking about. And not only does this mean we've lost the game in hand, but also the gap between us and Derby is now wider than it was before. And once again, we see a goal replay from behind the goal and it's Harrison Davies chugging back towards the goal at top speed. He stays in the team for now, but brace yourselves. He won't be there forever. Right, a couple of changes to the Tottenham game in the cup then. I am dropping Harrison Davies. Um, can you imagine Premier League defenders running at him? We're going with Lay and Barr at the back. So Akani comes into the midfield alongside Hodgkinson. I'm also bringing Hughes in for Hamilton so we can get Renan over to the left-hand side where he is theoretically more dangerous cutting in off of that left wing. You can't escape the fact that when Harrison Davies has started this season, we've lost most of our games. When Alec Lay has started this season, we've not lost most of our games. It's It doesn't matter what the average rating is. It doesn't matter what which one of them scores more goals. It doesn't matter how long either of them have been here. The simple fact is... We're a better team with Alec Lay in the side. And let's face it, Alec Lay's a home youngster as well. There's no reason to favour one home youngster over the other just because he's been here longer. And Joe Barr's a Premier League... Joe, Joe Barr will be a Premier League defender for years. So his his position is not under threat. Um, right, Akani's coming off. See, Akani coming off. The immediate and obvious thing is Harrison Davies. Um, and that's what I'm going to have to do. After all that, after that speech, 25 minutes and he's on anyway. And I've got those central midfielders the wrong way around. Hold on. Um, he needs to be a ball winning midfielder and he can be a, no, not a defensive deep line playmaker, a supporting deep line playmaker. There we go. So nil nil after 25 minutes. Akani did not last very long at all. And now Harrison Davies with a chance to redeem himself. It looks like he's been listening to me. He sat on the dugout for those first 25 minutes because he's come on and he's got a sad face on. Come on, Harrison, cheer yourself up. The, the man we all know and love forces his way through this run of poor form, digs in, shows leadership and scores the winner against Tottenham and gets, get re-establishes his hero status. I don't know if we've got replays in the FA Cup. A replay could be very handy financially, but I know during the COVID spell at the start of the game, there's no replays. I don't know if FA Cup replays ever come back later on, um, but normally in this situation, a replay would be excellent because it would earn us about 
six, seven hundred thousand pounds, I should think, an FA Cup game away against Tottenham. But I, I don't rate our chances of getting one, but we've got half an hour left in the game and we've not conceded yet. And Davies with a dominant header clear. Told you I loved him. Um, but it is, uh, it is the movies continuing from Tottenham who uh, weirdly just the move petered out. I don't know why the highlight had to continue for as long as it was. That was a strange one. Uh, but it is Tottenham on the attack again and somebody needs to get a tackle in here and it's nobody does. And Alex Williams, luckily, equal to the shot. It was a, it was a pretty tame shot, to be fair. Um, Hodgkinson is tired. Renan is tired. In fact, Renan is struggling and not playing well, apparently. Connor Roberts is tired and Kieran Hodgkinson. See, a lot of our youngsters are tired, although Hodgkinson and... Curry are definitely not youngsters anymore. Um, we are going to bring Zebi on for Renan, though. We can get him on and have a little bit of a run. And I think we take off Hodgkinson and bring on Yarabek to play in midfield. And we have another look at another one of our youngsters there. 20 minutes to go. Two of our untried youngsters. Well, they're not untried. They've probably played 15, 20 games each, mostly off the bench now. Um, Zebi's even scored a couple of goals. So he is starting to develop into a little bit of a threat from this left-hand side. And we've got an opportunity here for a very unlikely victory. Curry plays it across to Lay. Lay with the cross, but it's a poor one. And now Tottenham have got the opportunity for a counter-attack of their own. And it's it's two against three. And they're just charging. He had to be offside there. Um, and I think it has been called as offside. And now Spurs have got an injured player as well. And we are entering the final couple of minutes where we are going to find out if we get a replay or not. Like I say, a replay will be huge for us financially. Um, Zebi doesn't want one, though. He wants to win it here and now, trying to play it into Jessup in the final moments. Couldn't get there. Lay misses the tackle as the uh, Tottenham player charges through. But once again, they wastefully shoot from a long way out. Williams is never being beaten from there. And is it a replay? No, it's extra time. See, that's rubbish. That is rubbish. Do we get to make an extra substitution? Who have we got on the bench? Campbell, Hamilton, Fulton. Fulton's the one I want to bring on if I have the opportunity to. Should we bring him on up front? We're not allowed to. Err. Right, just get into this second half then. Um, at this point, we might as well just accept Spurs are going to beat us. They're going to be beating us fitness-wise. You can see just how tired most of our players are at this point. But a win for us would be a huge confidence booster, especially coming off the back of that derby game where we, uh, we should have done better than we did. It's frustrating to see us lose a game like that one we saw in the first half of the, half of the episode. But we've been, we've defended resolutely in this game. After everything I said about Davies, he's been on the pitch as a defender for most of the game and we've not really been that troubled. So, a bit there, I mean, we're not troubled until it happens again and the ball's played in behind him and again, he's just not quick enough and it's always, it's always in behind him that it happens. Oh... I don't know if it's a positioning thing, a pace thing, but he's just, he gets beaten like that every single game that he plays in. And it's infuriating. Now Alec Lay's got himself sent off with some kind of ridiculous karate manoeuvre. So Davies is going to be in the team for a little while now. And uh, yeah, it's all gone wrong now. There's certainly no coming back from this. We've lost our heads. Lay showing his youthful exuberance and inexperience and stupidity quite frankly because we'd only just gone a goal down we still had a chance and he blew the chance between the two of them the two players I'm trying to decide between have contrived to mess it all up we might have to drop them both and get Shea Charles or Eli Campbell in alongside Barr for a game or two because I'm not impressed with what I'm seeing from either of the options we've got in there today. Connor Roberts has had to drop back into central midfield. All interesting, Connor Roberts seems to have stopped, by the way, after he's basically started every game this season and not looked very good, unfortunately. So I don't know that I don't know that he's necessarily the kind of player who fits into the way we play, which is making it hard for him to fulfil his potential. Uh, Williams has done well again there. Once again, Alex Williams, the best player on the pitch. We are getting to the point where he deserves the move because he's so much better than everyone else here. The only problem is we still have the same issue if we don't have a backup goalkeeper because we can't find one. Finding an eight, an 18 or under goalkeeper who's good enough to play in the championship, believe it or not, quite tricky. But I guess it'll be a little bit easier to do if we have £15 million of Alex Williams' money to spend on it. If we can spend a couple of million on a, on a new goalkeeper who's a 
European wonder kid, then that seems to be how we'll have to do it when the time comes. But Williams, once again, um, equal to the Tottenham attack. And he's, I mean, they've beaten him once. He's, he's a very good goalkeeper. We didn't do too badly. Just one moment of slowness from Davies is all that separated us and Tottenham there. We are close to being a good side. We just don't get close enough, often enough. And now Akani's going to be out for a month or so. And Lay's going to be banned. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. Right, we will go through to the end of the transfer window before the next episode and probably a little bit beyond. Um, we'll get to sometime in the middle of February. Hopefully, we'll still be in with a push for the playoffs by then. But, I mean, we should probably be looking more in, in terms of getting enough points for survival at this point. If we win our game in hand now, it puts us up to 10th. Seven points behind Burnley. Mid-table. Just a, a season of mid-table survival this year. Might be, might be what we go for. And then actually try and sell Williams in the summer and use the money to rebuild a little bit which is easier said than done when you can only buy teenagers. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.